Hi. In the last session, we discussed about the group G acting on a set X and some useful examples. In this session, we talk about the equivalence relation on X induced by this group action. Let us see how the elements of X are related. So if G acts on a set X and if you have two elements in X, say X and Y, and X and is said to be related to Y if there exists a G in G such that GH is equal to Y. Here, this GH I mean star of G comma X as I mentioned in the last session. So, X and Y are G equivalent if there exists a G in G in the group G such that GH is equal to Y. So, we denote it as tilde if and that means X is related to Y means X is tilde Y. So, we show that this relation is an equivalence relation on X. Now, to show it is an equivalence relation, we need to show that it is reflexive, it is symmetric and it is transitive. It is reflexive means what X is related to X itself. You know that by the first property of group action, EX is equal to X. That means star of E comma X is equal to X for all X. So for this particular X also, we have E X is equal to X. That means you obtain a an element E belongs to G such that E X is equal to X. Therefore, by definition, e is X is related to X. So this relation is reflexive. Now to show it is symmetric, let us assume that X is related to Y. This means that there exists a G in G such that GH is equal to Y. Since G is a group and a small g is an element of G, implies G inverse also belongs to G. So therefore, G inverse Y equal to G inverse of GH because Y is equal to GH and which is same as G inverse G into X because of the second property of the group action and since G inverse G is equal to E, we have G inverse Y equal to E X and which is same as X. That means we obtain an element G inverse in G such that G inverse Y equal to X. That means that Y is related to X by definition. So therefore, this relation is a symmetry. That means X is related to Y implies Y is related to X. Now to show it is transitive. For that, let us assume that H is related to Y and Y is related to X. Y is related to Z. So since H is related to Y, we can always find a G1 in G such that G1 X is equal to Y. And since Y is related to Z, we can always find a G2 in G such that G2 Y equal to Z. So therefore, Z equal to G2 Y but y is equal to g1x, so you can write it as g2 into g1x and which is same as g1g2, g2 g1 into x. That means we obtain an element g2 g1 in g. This is because g1 and g2 are in g and g is a group implies g2 g1 is in g. So therefore we obtain an element g2 g1 in G such that G to G1 into X is equal to Z. That means X is related to Z. So we prove that X is related to Y and Y is related to Z implies X is related to Z. That means this relation is transitive. Hence, this relation is an equivalence relation on X. And this equivalence relation partition the set X into disjoint equivalence classes. And this equivalence classes we call an orbit of X under G. 
That means what are the orbit of x in x? We denoted it as OH and which is same as the set of all elements in x that are related to x. That means which is the set of all y in x such that a gh is equal to y. For some, g belongs to g. So in fact, that set is same as gh where all g belongs to g. All possible choices of gx where g belongs to g. g varies in g. Let us see some example. Let G be a permutation group defined by G is equal to the identity permutation, the cycle 1, 2, 3, the cycle 1, 3, 2, the transposition 4, 5, the product of two cycles 1, 2, 3 and 4, 5 and the product of two cycles 1, 3, 2 and 4, 5. And X is the set 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So then G adds on X via the action star from g cross x to x which is defined as star of g comma x is equal to g of x. So note that g is a permutation that means it's a map and you are taking star of g h as the image of x under the permutation g in g. So then what are the orbits? We have to, we'll see that what are the orbits of x that means orbit of 1, orbit of 2, orbit of 3, orbit of 4 and orbit of 5. So to begin with we consider orbit of 1. Orbit of 1 means what? The set of all x and x which is related to 1. That means set of all x and x such that g of 1 is equal to x for all g belongs to g. That means that you are taking all images of or 1 under each element of G. That means that we are considering the set of images of 1 under each G is in G. So what is the image of uh, 1 under the identity map? Identity permutation 1 goes to 1. So it is image is 1. Under the permutation 1 to 3 the image of 1 is 2. Under the image uh, transpose or the permutation 1 3 2 the image of 1 is 3. Under the transposition 4 5 the image of 1 is 1 under the permutation 1, 2, 3 into 4, 5, the image of 1 is 2. Under the permutation 1, 3, 1, 3 2 into 4, 5, the image is 3. So therefore, the orbit set of 1 contains 1, 2 and 3. Similarly, we can show that the orbit of 2 is 1, 2, 3 and orbit of 3 is also 1, 2, 3. And uh, orbit of 4 is 4 and 5 and orbit of 5 is also 4 and 5. Now we'll see some set, different subset of X and G. Now for a fixed G belongs to G, we'll find out all the elements in X which is fixed by this G. That set, we call it as a fixed point set of G and is denoted as X surface G and is the set of all x and x which is fixed by this particular g. That means x g is equal to set of all x and x such that g h is equal to x. Similarly for a fixed x belongs to s, we can find what are the elements of g in g which fixes x. That means that set we call it as a stabilizer of x and is denoted it as g suffix x and which is defined as g of x x is equal to set of all g is in g which it fixes x that means set of all g in g such that g x is equal to x. Note that this x g is a subset of x and g x is a subset of g. Now we'll see some example of fixed point set of g and uh, the stabilizer of x. So let us consider the set x is equal to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 and g is the permutation group given by the identity permutation, the product 1, 2 into 3, 4, 5, 6, the product 3, 5 into 4, 6, the product 1, 2 into 3, 6, 5, 4. So let uh, we will find out what are the fixed point set of x. So you, for example, if you take G is equal to the identity permutation, then SG is equal to X because 
the identity permutation fixes every element of h. So h of 1 is equal to h. Now what about g is equal to 3, 5 into 4, 6? So you can see that under this permutation, 1 goes to 1, 2 goes to 2. And all other 3 goes to 5, 5 goes to 3, 4 goes to 6, and 6 goes to 4. Therefore, under this permutation, 1 is only going to 1 and 2 only goes to 2. All other goes to different things. That means this G fixes only 1 and 2. So therefore, X of G is equal to 1, 2, where G is equal to 3, 5, 4, 6. If G is equal to 1, 2 into 3, 4, 5, 6, 1 goes to 2 and 2 goes to 1, 3 goes to 4, 4 goes to 5, 5 goes to 6 and 6 goes to 3. That means none of the element of x is fixed by this permutation. Therefore, x of g is equal to empty. Similarly, x of 1, 2 into 3 is 5, 4 is also empty set. What are the stabilizer of x? So we have to find what is stabilizer of 1, stabilizer 2, stabilizer of 3, 4, 5, and 6. Now by definition, g1 means what? G1 is the set of all elements of G that fixes 1. Now what are the elements of G fixes 1? Clearly the identity element or the identity permutation which fixes 1. And the permutation 3, 5, 4, 6 is also fixes 1. No other element of G fixes 1. So therefore G1 contains only two elements namely the identity permutation and the permutation 3, 5 and 4, 6. Similarly, we can show that G2 is same as the identity permutation and the permutation 3, 5, 4, 6. And G3, G4, G5 and G6 are only, contains only identity permutation because that is the only permutation which fixes 3, which fixes 4, which fixes 5 and which fixes 6. So now you, can, you have seen that GX is the set of all Gs in G which fixes X. That means it is a subset of G. We show that this subset in fact is a subgroup of G. Let us see the proof of it. By the first property of the group action, EH is equal to H. That means the identity elements fixes X. Which means that E belongs to GH. That means GH is non-empty. Now we show that it is closed under multiplication. That means let G1 and G2 belongs to GX. That means that G1 and G2 fixes X or G1X is equal to X and G2X is equal to X. So therefore G1, G2 into X is same as G1 of G2X. This is because of the second property of the group action. But you know that G2X is equal to X. So we have G1, G2X is equal to G1X. But G1H is also equal to H. Therefore, G1, G2H is equal to H. That means that G1, G2 fixes X. Which means, by definition, G1, G2 belongs to GH. That means, GH is closed under multiplication. Finally, if G belongs to GH, we show that G is clo GH is closed under inverse. So, let us take G belongs to GH. So which means that G fits us X, that means GX is equal to X. Therefore, we can write X is equal to E into X by the first property of the group action and E is equal to G inverse G, so we can write X is equal to G inverse G into X. By the second property of the group action, we can write it as G inverse GX is equal to G inverse into GX. So, X is equal to G inverse of GX, but G is in GX, that means GX is equal to X, therefore it is same as X is equal to G inverse X. That means that G inverse X is equal to X. That means that G inverse fixes X. That means that G inverse belongs to GX. So, that means that, it, therefore we have proved that it is GX is closed under inverse also. So, hence GX is a subgroup of G. Now, what are the, you know that GOH is actually a subset of X. So now how do we find the number of elements of that orbit? So we can show that if G adds on X, 
then the number of elements in the orbit of x is same as the index of g x and g let us see the proof of this one to show that two set have the same cardinality we need to have a map from one set to another set so before that what is the set on the right hand side so know that the index of g x and g is the number of left coset of g x and g let l g x denote the set of left coset of g x and g then we know that the number of elements in l g x is same as index of g x and g so to show the number of elements of orbit of x is equal to index of g x and g it is enough to show that the number of elements in y x and the number of elements in l g x are same so we need to have a bijective map between these two sets so define phi from y x to l g x as follows take y belongs to x which means what y is related to x that means there exists a g in g such that g x is equal to y so we can easily define phi from o x to l g x by phi of y is equal to the left coset of g the small g in capital g s the stabilizer of x we now show that this phi is well defined and it is does not depend on our selection of g suppose h is an element of g such that h is also y then we have g h and h is same or taking multiplying g inverse on both sides from the left we get h is equal to g inverse h s that means that g inverse h x is equal to h that means g inverse h fixes x that means g inverse h must be belongs to the stabilized of x therefore this means that a g inverse h belongs to gx which means that a g into the left coset of g and the left coset of h are same under gx therefore phi is well defined we now show that phi is one one let us take two elements x1 and x2 in y such so that phi of x1 is equal to phi of x2 since x1 and x2 are belongs to ox that means x1 and x2 are related to x so by definition we can get g1 and g2 in g such that x1 is equal to g1x and x2 is equal to g2x so therefore by definition phi of x1 is the left coset of g1 and phi of x2 is the left coset of g2 therefore phi of x1 is equal to phi of x2 implies g1 gx the left coset of g1 equal to left coset of g2 that means that g1 inverse g2 belongs to gx the stabilized of x let to this element we call it as small g that means g inverse g1 inverse g2 is equal to small g which belongs to the stabilized of x so then g2 we can write it as g1 into g therefore by definition x2 is equal to g2x but g2 is what g1 g therefore x2 is equal to g1 gx but g is in where in gx so g fixes x that means gx is equal to x therefore x2 is equal to g1x but by definition g1x is equal to x1 so x2 and x1 are same therefore phi is 1 1 we now show that phi is 1 2 so for that you take some g left coset of g in lgx since g belongs to g and it's an edge gx also belongs to x because g acts on x therefore gx is in x means what gx will be one y belongs to y in x therefore phi of y is equal to g gx thus phi is on to the Hence, phi is a bijection, and therefore, number of elements in Y is equal to index of G X and G. So, note that this G X, the stabilizer of X, may not be a normal subgroup of G. Therefore, G mod G X is just a set of coset. And also, we have not placed any group operation or group structure on X. So, X is not a group. So, phi is not a group homomorphism. but still we have the following if the finite group g 
adds on H set H, then the number of elements of G, the order of G is equal to the order of G H into the number of elements in O H. In other words, O H, the number of elements in O H divides order of G. This is obvious because via the previous lemma we have O of H is equal to index of G H and G, which is same as order of G upon order of G H, which implies by cross multiplication order of G is equal to order of G H into the number of elements in O H. So this means that O H, the cardinality of O H divides the order of the group. So this is for the day. If you like, please subscribe the channel. Selby's Maths Capsules.